We have already seen what are energy signals and now in this lecture we will discuss what are power signals. I will first write down the condition for a signal to be energy signal. A signal is set to be energy signal if and only if its total energy is finite and when this happens the total energy is finite the average power p becomes zero. So this is the condition for a signal to be energy signal and it is good to have the range of total energy as E is finite this means E is going to be less than infinity and we know already in the formula of total energy there is modulus this means E cannot be negative so it will always be greater than zero so this is the range of total energy for a signal to be energy signal and we know the reason why power is equal to zero when energy is finite. Now let's talk about the power signals. A signal is set to be power signal if and only if its average power p is finite. So if you compare energy signals and power signals you will find in case of energy signals total energy is finite and in case of power signals average power is finite. Now what will happen to the total energy when average power is finite I will explain after a few minutes but first we will find out the range of average power as average power is finite it will always be less than infinity and there is modulus in the formula of average power so it will always be greater than zero as it cannot be negative so this is the range of average power now let's talk about the total energy we already know total energy E is equal to average power P multiplied by the total time. In the first lecture of energy and power of continuous time signals we saw this relation and P is finite. P is finite and we calculate the average power by integrating the signal mod x t square from minus infinity to infinity and then dividing it by the total time. The total time is from minus infinity to infinity. So what will be this time? This time is simply infinity and here we are multiplying a finite value to the infinity so the total energy is going to be infinite. So we have infinite as the total energy when p is equal to finite. So this is the condition for a signal to be power signal and I hope this is clear to you. Now we will see few properties of power signals. Properties of power signals. In the first property we will talk about periodic signals. Periodic signals are power signals but vice versa is not true. Periodic signals are power signals but vice versa is not true. This means if there is a periodic signal, if there is a periodic signal then it will be power signal but if there is a power signal it is not important that the power signal is periodic. Periodic signals are power signals because we know in case of periodic signals the extension of the signal is from minus infinity to infinity with a particular structure repeating and in that way if you calculate the average power it will be finite and the energy will be infinite. So this is the first property of the power signals. The second property is related to the root mean square value. When you calculate the average power using it you can calculate the RMS value. Average power is equal to the square of RMS value. This means power is the mean of square values and from here we can calculate the root mean square value. It will be under root average power. We will use this relation to find out root mean square value of the given signals. The third property is related to the formula we have already seen for the power of continuous time signal. For periodic and non-periodic signals the average power formula is different and if you remember in the formula we have modulus. So if there are two signals and the two signals are not having the same waveform but when you find out the modulus of the two signals and you have the same waveform in that way the power is going to be same. The average power of the two signals will be same. To explain this I will take two different signals xt and yt. 
The first waveform on your screen is the waveform of signal xt. The second waveform is the waveform of signal yt. And now we will take the modulus of the two signals and in that way we will have mod xt and mod yt. I will quickly draw the waveform of mod xt and mod yt. You can see after taking the modulus the two waveforms are same and this means mod xt is same as mod yt and in this way the average power of signal xt will be equal to average power of signal yt. You can easily obtain mod xt and mod yt. The only thing you need to do is to make the negative portions positive. So we have the waveform like this. This is also negative. So make it positive. Flip it about the x-axis. In this waveform, this is negative. Make it positive. This is also negative. Here we have negative. So you can see the two waveforms are same and the same thing I have drawn here. Now let's solve one example based on the power calculation. In this example, the signal we are having is the periodic signal. This particular structure is repeated after T0. T0 is the fundamental time period and we already know the formula of average power for periodic signals. It is equal to integration mod xt square dt from minus t0 by 2 to t0 by 2 divided by t0. So this is the formula. Now we will locate minus t0 by 2. This is minus t0 by 2 and this one here is t0 by 2. So if you find the difference between the lower limit and the upper limit, it will be equal to t0. Now we will integrate in this limit 1 by t0 integration from minus t0 by 2 to 0. You can see signal value is equal to 0 and from 0 to t0 by 2 you can see signal value is a0 and as we are having mod xt square we will have a0 square here now perform the integration and you will have 1 by t0 inside the bracket a0 t the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is t0 by 2 here we will have a0 square t now in the next step we will put the upper limit and the lower limit and the average power p will be 1 by t0 multiplied to a0 square t0 by 2. t0, t0 will cancel out and in this way a0 square by 2 is our answer. We have the average power and the average power is finite. a0 is some constant, it is not infinity. So this implies this value here is finite value and we can say that signal xt is power signal and what will be the energy? The energy will be infinity. We can also calculate the root mean square value, the root mean square value of signal xt. It is equal to under root average power p, average power we have already calculated. So under root a0 square by 2 will give us a0 by root 2. So in this way using the average power we can calculate the root mean square value of the given signal. The signal in this problem is one standard signal and it is good to remember the average powers of few standard signals. In the coming presentation I will give you one complete list of standard signals and their average powers. You can use those values directly in examinations. And once we know the average power we can easily calculate the root mean square value. So this is all for this lecture. In the coming lectures we will discuss more problems based on the power signal and the power calculation. We will see what will happen to the average power on performing time shifting, amplitude scaling, etc. So this is all. See you in the next one.